Clarice 5.5 is most likely going to bring some changes to the way that you shade your models. Specifically with OSL and Material X, there's some things that you're going to need to know that may give you a little bit of trouble when you're first starting out. So specifically in OSL and Material X, the UVs are probably going to be a little bit weird if you've never used it before. Uh, OSL is a little bit easier, but Material X is definitely a little bit confusing. If you've never used it before, it's definitely going to throw you for a loop and you're going to run into some issues with that. So stick around for that. We're going to cover both of these. But first of all, I want to kind of go over OSL and the Angie render. So basically, as far as my understanding of it is anyways, OSL is kind of what feeds into the render. So you're going to want to use everything that is involved with OSL or Material X to do your shading because everything gets converted to that OSL and then fed into the render. And currently, at least in my experience, the standard Clarice uh, nodes don't necessarily all work fully yet. They should all be supported once the final release is out, but I've had some issues with shading with the standard Clarice stuff because I didn't want to switch over to OSL material X and uh, go through the process of learning but definitely something that you're gonna want to do so don't make that mistake before I jump in here this model is just from Quixel bridge so if you want to use this model it's just a, an old stump from Quixel Megascan so you can go ahead and download that it will cost you a couple of points but it's a pretty nice model so to start off here we're going to start with OSL so let's go ahead and drop in an Autodesk standard surface so we don't want this first one because that's going to be Clarice. We want to look for the OSL in the file path here, and we'll just drop that one in. And then we will need our texture map. So for the OSL, I'm just going to go over here to the OSL thing and drop down this map and bring in a texture map file. And then I'm just going to paste in our albedo. I'm not going to go over the full shading workflow. I'm just going to be covering the UVs in this video because it is a little bit confusing. Not so much with OSL, but definitely with uh, Material X. So let's go ahead and wire this up into our base color. I'm just going to assign that to our model here and switch this over to PBR. And I'm also going to make sure that this is set to GPU, which we are, because it's a little bit faster and I've got a pretty powerful GPU, so I might as well take advantage of it. So just to start off here, the model has some sort of weird projection going on. So it's not lining up properly with the UVs like you would expect. And that's because if you notice here on our texture map file, we have these UV options. We need to actually assign the UVs essentially. So for that, we want to just right click and go to UV and look for this texture UV projection. And we'll just wire that up into the UVW. And now you can see that everything is lining up just fine like we need it. So that's basically OSL in a nutshell. Just plug in this UVW to every single texture map that you got and things should line up properly. Now Material X, like I said, is going to be a little bit different and I want to give a huge shout out and thanks to the Clarice, uh, the Isotropics devs for helping me out with figuring this out because I could not for the life of me get to the UVs figured out with Material X. So they kind of sat down and took some time out of their days to figure it out and uh, help me out with that. So shout out to them. But let's go ahead and drop in this material from the Material X. And then we want the Material X standard surface shader. Just plug that into our material. And then we can go into this material. So you can see all the nodes in here. So there's a bunch of different things in here. You can either go under this texture 2D or you can type in image. We want the image color three. That's going to be your, uh, basically your image maps or your texture maps for material X. So again, I'm just gonna place the albedo into our file path and our base color. And I'll go ahead and assign this up to our object here. And then once again, you see that we have a bunch of weird stuff going on. And let's go ahead, just up this roughness a little bit as well. But so we have some weird stuff going on with the UVs. It's not being assigned properly and it looks super, super weird. 
So if we look here, we have this texture coordinate. So we need to get a vector two for our texture coordinate, but it's not just any vector two. You can't just plug in a vector two node and plug that in there and it'll work properly. You have to actually use a, what's called a geom or geometry prop value. So we're looking for the vector two version of that. And we can just plug that into our texture cord. And right away it does something, but again, not exactly what we're looking for. It just turns it this weird shade of brown, looks like poop. So first of all, the thing that you're gonna need to do is come to this geom prop section here and type in UV. And we have, again, something going on, but not exactly lining up properly like we would expect. And I'll cover that here in a second. So if you've never used Material X, this is kind of gonna be super hard to discover. I will look through the um, documentation to try and figure out kind of what all, how to get UVs lined up and what we need to type in here. And there's really not a whole lot on Material X just out there in general, and the documentation is pretty poor. So I do plan on covering Material X a lot more as I continue to learn and use it more. So you can look forward to some of that because it is quite confusing. But as I said, we have our UVs somewhat being assigned here, but they're not working properly. Things aren't lined up exactly how they should. That's because, and as far as I know, this is what the Clarice devs kind of explained and it sounds, or at least my uh, understanding of it is that this is a bug with the implementation into Clarice. So hopefully this will be fixed in the future or maybe it's not a bug, I don't know. Uh, but this is how you're going to get them to line up properly. So we're going to come to this math thing and come down to multiply and you want this multiply vector two. You can also do multiply and then come down to this vector two under the material X. For material X, you do have to use all of these nodes that have this little material X symbol. Can't use any other nodes like OSL inside of material X, they don't work. So we'll just plug this into our wire here and nothing changes right away. And that's because we need to come to this Y out value and we need to invert that. So we'll do negative one. And once we do that, you can see that our texture has lined up properly on our model and we're looking all good. So with all of your, your images or your textures that you're going to be wiring into your materials, just make sure that you have this vector two plugged into their texture coordinates and you should be all set to go. Everything should line up properly. So super confusing when you're just starting out, um, not a whole lot on Material X and it's super, super difficult to navigate your way through. So like I said, I do plan on discovering more and playing with this more, trying to figure out all about Material X and sharing my findings as I go. So this is kind of my first foray into Material X as well, along with the uh, Houdini Karma stuff, a little bit of, of Material X there as well. But anyways, I do have a bunch of other videos on my channel all about Clarice as well as some stuff on Houdini and Redshift, a little bit on Octane and Cinema 4D as well. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure you guys check out those videos. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.